Welcome back viewers. This is Literary Goa again and we have with us authors who have written books relating to Goa, from Goa, the diaspora and things like that. Today we have with us Marian Furtado de Nazareth. Marian, your connections are with Pilen and Bangalore, right? That's right. How Bangalore? Bangalore because uh, my grandfather, uh, Hippolyto Jean Furtado, uh, moved from Goa to, uh, from Pilen and went away to Nairobi where he uh, you know, looked for his fortune. I think in those days that's where they made their money. And uh, Which years? Uh, this was in the early th uh, 30s, yeah. or probably even a little earlier than that. And he met my grandmom there and married her, a Goan. And then they came back and instead of settling in Goa, they s decided to settle in Bangalore because the weather is very similar. Bangalore also is a big place for English education was. That's right. He was very keen on having his family in Bangalore and and then of course he had come back with a fortune so he wanted to be comfortable I guess. And, and he himself studied in the English schools in Bardes or where? Oh, uh, he's, I'm not very uh, sure about that but I know he did his accountancy uh, and uh, right. his basic education was done here in Goa before he uh, decided to go to Nairobi and then he did whatever further studies there. Because a lot of people from this Bardes belt who migrated to the English speaking world actually studied in schools like Arpora, Saligaon, okay. Parra, you know, okay. in that sense. But anyway, you have been a journalist, you've been in advertising, you've been an author, yes. many roles and also a professor. Yes. Tell us uh, how it evolved. Well, I've been wearing many hats for a long time. Uh, I started off with an ad agency, uh, basically um, family run along with my husband. And uh, we ran it for about 12 years. It did really well. And, uh, but towards the end, it, I was becoming creative to try and get my money rather than creative ads. So then I thought, okay, let's just close that down and let me get on and get a job full time. Meanwhile, I, um, writing has always been a great love of mine, my first love. So uh, I was hired by the Deccan Herald that because I used to major, freelance. Major newspaper in Bangalore. Yes, the yeah. way I, because I used to um, a freelance for several years before that. So I went in there and I worked there for two years with I the see. Deccan Herald. As an assistant editor? Uh, I first started as chief sub. Okay. And then I landed this fantastic uh, fellowship which took me to Europe. And I studied in Europe in uh, starting in Denmark. I see. Uh, in Aarhus, that is a university town uh, south of Copenhagen. And then I moved to Amsterdam for six months. And then from there I went to uh, the UK in Wales where I did a year. I see. So I did a two year masters in journalism. I see. After which I came back and uh, the Deccan Herald was so pleased for me to come back there because you know you get yourself a foreign yeah. degree you normally look for greener pastures but I guess I'm just a bit loyal and I went back and they gave me assistant editor I editorship. See. I see. Looking after? Uh, the edit and the op-ed pages. I see. Yes. I see. It was very, very uh, high responsibility, uh, but... The pages uh, were very, very well done because... Very you know. well done. They had uh, designers who came in from Switzerland and I all see. over and taught us how it had to be done. And then I enjoyed doing my uh, work with them, but it curtailed my writing. And that is when I decided... Uh, let me just get out of there and I worked, uh, I went off and did my PhD. I see. In what topic? Uh, in journalism. I see. What's, yes. What topic is it? Uh, I did, uh, that's when uh, the interest had grown on conservation of species I see. and uh, science and the environment. So my topic, my dissertation was man and elephant conflict and how the media covers it. In Karnataka you have a lot of that, no? We have a lot of it in South India, South yes. India. Huge. And so I covered two newspapers, that is the uh, Times of India and the Hindu. I see. And I analyzed the two newspapers. I see. 
as for my dissertation, which was really interesting. And after I finished my uh, PhD, I decided uh, it was uh, along with my PhD, I was working in this college. But now I was asked by Mount Carmel's all see. of a sudden to come and teach their girls. I see. And uh, it's been a very exciting and very interesting, uh, you know, uh, session uh, because I'm teaching uh, non-journalists. I'm teaching uh, science students. I'm teaching okay. economic students and those who are doing commerce and uh, students who've never had exposure to uh, journalism ever. So they feel that these students also need access to media literacy or? Yes, they felt because these kids wanted to know more about journalism, especially since there's so much being talked about, uh, you know, with the environment today and all about climate change and with Greta, the little 16 year old right. who has come out uh, talking about it. They are very, very pro the environment today. Yeah. And so they wanted to know a lot more what do you do with wet waste composting? How do you do solar energy? I see. All those various topics. I've, what is renewable energy? What is sustainable living? That is where I moved into. So in a word, what you're saying is that in this field, you really need to reinvent yourself. All right, all, all the, the time. time. Constantly and uh, look for a niche rather than just reportage. Because I find uh, if you look for a niche, the, uh, the whole world is your oyster. You can be writing for anybody across the... And yeah. today with the internet, uh, you know, anyone will uh, hire you. So for at least 12 to 15 years, I traveled with the UNFCCC as their uh, fellow, with UNEP as their fellow to uh, Nairobi. I went back to my I grandfather's stomping grounds. And uh, uh, with U UN Water, with... Uh, many U UN arms uh, uh, focusing on the environment and science and the environment. That's what I did. Shifting gears a bit to your yes. books. Yes. Uh, of course, the most colorful one and the one I like the most is Above the Rice Fields of Pilen. Yes. And uh, since I'm more or less from that area, I know your house It's something very typical. You'd like to tell us about this book? Yes. So I was never really into wanting to write a book. And then my dad said, how can you not want to write a book? Uh, you know, you should, I, I can see how you write and why don't you get down to it? So this book took me 10 years I to see. write. I, I just... The, your first? No. Yes, my your first. first. Your I first. never had the heart really okay. to write it because I, my kids were growing at that time. Yeah. The boys were growing. But you know, I could see dad's love for Pilen and uh, he of course has put that into me now but uh, I decided okay let me just do the novel and let me give it a try who knows maybe a publisher will take it and I was so surprised the very first publisher I who see. was lead start grabbed I see. it I see. and what was so nice was that I was here in Pilen we were here in Pilen and uh, she sent me this message saying uh, I'm sending you the contract we like your manuscript and I was so thrilled it was my first book. I see. So I sent her photos of the, of the book. Okay. And I sent her, I mean, of the, of the house, house. And I sent her uh, photos of the, the church. The church, church. Yes, of the St. Uh, John the Baptist. John the Baptist. And I sent her photos of the, the fields around the house. And they got the artist to... Yes, play. and I was so thrilled they never told me. I see. And they, they got see. the artist to do this. Better than the real thing. I yeah. Mean, of course. I mean, you know, and, and, and they got everything in it, with the teak trees, the color of the house. I see. They got it correct, no? Absolutely correct with the yeah. little, uh, you know, porch. It's not a big rich yeah. man's house. It's yeah. not. But it's typically gone and it has yes. that charm. And yes. It's got that old world charm also to it, no? Yes. You and said 300 years old? Yes. It's uh, the, now, even that, uh, what happened was the lower part of the house is what could be the agriculturalist that's my great great grandfather had built. I see. So that was more a 
very simple house okay with the i know when we were kids there was cow dung floors yeah. and you that know that was there very, for in, in all yes. the, in all cases most cases in the in yes. the 60s and 70s no yes. 60s and the bathroom was outside, outside and we were terrified of that with the snakes yeah. and that sort and of thing and the walls were probably made of lime and uh, you know lime and mud maybe or, yes I don't know, whatever. yes and 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 then when my grandpa went to nairobi uh, he made his money and he came back and he built the okay. top portion okay so that's why and he built a chapel opposite i see so you've seen the chapel and this is it on the match. road leading away from the pilen church no yes pilen church going into the wado which is into called the, it's called furta wado furta wado that's where all the fatadas came from so this is exactly opposite that and so i wrote this book and sadly it was published after my father passed oh. very sad which year uh, this was published in 2005 i, I think see. but uh, dad passed away in 2003 and i think maybe that was what was the incentive finish it i see it. i see and so this was a, and it was very uh, warmly welcomed uh, the goan diaspora across the world uh, you know put it out on their i see uh, facebook sites and uh, it's 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 been doing quite well i mean I it's see. into its second round of I see. Uh, yeah uh, this is the first book and then of course i did a couple of others which are they can you just introduce yes us to them uh the second book which i did was a couple of years later this was a a selection of 12 stories i had written about when i was in the deccan herald nicely illustrated very nice it was done by a uh, done by an um one of the artists in the office i see you know and uh, it was called the one eyed ogre and other stories i see and uh, yeah it's totally sold out the kids just I love see. it and uh, this i got self published because uh, you can't publish uh, stories which are already okay. published okay. so the deccan had led already published these 12 I see. stories i see i see in the so, children's pages yes in open sesame i see open sesame open sesame is their uh, children section yes their children section and it really did well i i probably have only four or five books left of this when your kids are young then you feel like writing for children and yes an age. and that's when i started uh now no subsequent to that yeah i did this one because like you know you evolve with with what's happening in your life as True. a writer True. so both my parents sadly had parkinsons oh. very bad i see and um so i thought you know as carers we can write a novel i, I mean and and put in a lot of research so that's where my phd came in with all the research about parkinsons i see this book was published now in in uh, towards the end of march beginning of april I of see. 2019 i see again lead start okay and uh i've been interviewed by a lot of uh places because parkinsons is something that is touching almost every family I today see. and uh so this is a book which is really uh, has sold a lot of copies for my launch i had a huge crowd people were very excited to have this book you know because it's written in the you know a, a like a novel it's about two little girls i see and how they grow up with these strong caring parents and how these parents slowly 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 so it is in uh, it is all about us my sister and me and my parents I but i have not used our okay, names okay. i have not used our names and i've written only about two uh, children across the whole uh, you know story this has done really well as well but now i've taken to writing for my granddaughter how big is she she when she got this book she was 5 i see okay and she so uh, a book specially written for her wow like for christmas quite quite, quite yes, something yes specially she was thrilled because uh you know it was all about it was a, tr- a true story about how she would go out into the garden and uh you know wouldn't want to weed and wouldn't want to take out the dandelions and it's andrea and the dandelions her name is andrea no her okay. name is uh, elena okay but uh this slight is small yes. fictional license that yes you... because i didn't see i was uh, going to leave it as commercial as well yeah. to sell it uh but um, 
I couldn't keep her names in, not for any reason. Yeah. She wouldn't have minded, but I preferred not yeah. to. Yeah. And the whole story is about how she came out into the garden and how she was, uh, you know, putting on her gum boots. I see. And how she came out into the garden with her dad was with the lawnmower, and uh, she refused to take off, pull out the dandelions, and she wanted to blow the seeds, I the see. dandelion seeds. And her dad said, no, don't, An Andrea. And she said, why not? And then uh, he said, because you'll make a hundred more uh, dandelion weeds. And then it struck her, like, you know, why her dad didn't want her to, uh, you know, uh, blow the seeds. Yeah. And so he, he taught her to throw them all into a bucket and put them on a, a, a you know, a whole ha a heap where they would just, you know, compost them. And then she kind of understood I because see. she uh, really is very fond of her dad. So it took, actually, I can write these stories fast, but to get an illustrator. I see. You know, and I want Yatish. I, I like his work. You very know, nice, you can see nice. his work. Yeah, it's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And he takes time. He's very expensive. Uh, that does look like my son. I see. I see. <laughs> that does look like Andrew. He's a cardiologist in uh, Tennessee. I see. But has taken up gardening a lot and enjoys gardening because of the family and what he learned with his grandpa. So yes, like I said, this story, this is uh, 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 written specially for my granddaughter, Elena, but it's in memory of my uh, grandmother who used to tell us stories. I see. So, so this uh, habit of storytelling runs in the family? Yes, it does. it does. We used to sit out in the backyard with my grandmom and every night and she would tell us stories in the light of the big moon. But we used to go to Baroda. They were based in Baroda. Goa, Goa and Goans do have a tradition of storytelling. Yes. But it seems to be fading out now. Would that be right? I don't know. Uh, you know what? The thing is that parents don't have the time. But I have found that, uh, it, you know, I try, I go to various schools to talk about uh, stories and writing. Uh, and I just did a whole round of uh, daycare centers in Bangalore called Clay. And uh, it's a preschool and a daycare center. And I explained to parents that if you don't read, how do you expect the little ones to learn to read? True. True. So they sit and I explain, pick up uh, stories, you know, which have large pictures. If you have large pictures, the child gets interested. And uh, See, it's just like very little text with right. a huge picture. Right. So uh, I've told young parents, you have to find the time. If you don't, you can't expect. And today's kids have, you know, so much competition. True. True. So it really helps and, uh, you know, take them to buy books which they want. That luckily uh, my parents did. And Bangalore's been this lovely place with yes. a lot of libraries, a lot of bookshops. Yes. You know, my favorite used to be Select Bookshop run by the Select yes. Aeronautical Engineer. Yes. Where you could buy so cheap secondhand books. Correct. Sapna is there and uh, now Blossom with three floors of secondhand Book books. Yes. Bookworm. Lots. Gangarams was there. Uh, there are so many bookshops. Now what has happened is that if you finish reading a book, Yeah and you're done with it and you have no space, yeah. you can give it back and he'll give you another book price. for 50%. Fifty oh, percent. Another book. Yes. There is a story also that Bangalore probably benefited from all these, uh, you know, returning Brits going back after World War II, uh, after independence. Correct. And selling away their libraries and that's how some of these second-hand bookshops started. I think it's so important, not to... It is, it is. And many of those books, uh, strangely, are, yes first editions which they just gave away for little or nothing. Mm. But uh, uh, what I have found is uh, for the last nine years I'm running a little book club. Called? It was, when I first started I called it Eyebrows and it was run in the Catholic club in Bangalore, big. Really, I had really big names including uh, Wendell Rodericks came there and his book called Poske and I also uh, had quite a number of uh, various authors who came in even from the UK and uh, the bookshop real uh, the book club really did well now we uh, I've changed the the whole format 
we are just about 30 of us who discuss what we read. I see. Rather than having an author. I see. We discuss what we have read because we are all uh, deep readers. Interesting. Yeah. And you share that knowledge and everyone goes home with so much more knowledge. At yes. The end of the and we also share books. I see. So the last person. Very we, interesting. Yes. The last person who came, she spoke about, she does only translations. Ah. And she does translations from uh, Marathi, from English, uh, from Marathi to English. So uh, that would be marvelous, you know, if there was anyone who would do we, we have a, to English. Yeah, we have a book club in Goa, but it's been a bit stagnant. And our model has been to get an uh, author to talk about his or her book. Okay. So I think your model is very interesting, where you talk about what you've been reading and share books and, you know. Yes, because what happens is, if people speak, I have found that, there's rather than participation. To, yes. When there is more participation, people are very interested. Yeah. When it's just one on one, when it's just top, top down. down. Why should why should we listen? Like? Nobody's interested. They get bored. Whereas this interaction where they hear their own voices, I have found is brilliant and really does well. Marian, when you were getting ready for the interview, your husband and your son mentioned that uh, you've also been related to Joseph Furtado, the poet, Joseph yes. and Philip Furtado. Yes. Now, these are very big names uh, in Goa and they've done amazing work and appreciated in different parts of the world, forgotten in their own home perhaps today. Yes. Tell yes. us a little bit about what well, you know. to be honest, I just only have memories of what my father told I me. See. And I do have a first edition of Joseph Otardo's uh, poems. Which Songs was, in Exile? Yes, which was signed by him I and see. given to my grandfather. And my mom gave that to me, so I have it. I see. And, uh, and I know dad and mom always told me that uh, he was, you know, a man before his time. People in the village were unhappy with his, uh, you know, idiosyncrasies, and he's quite a bit strange, yeah. you know. And uh, uh, but today they are they are using him as text. Yeah. And what is powerful about him is that he wrote in an Indo-Anglian style, That's right. using using Indian sounds, Hindi words. Yes. Before it became fashionable, and before anyone else probably experimented with it. Correct. In that sense. And and. Uh, uh, while I was in the Deccan Herald, I did do a story on him, I remember. I see. But uh, I do know that there's a really good story done by a researcher from the UK. Uh, and, you know, there is talk where he talked about this man's work. I see. And which is now become fashionable to have in your texts for school children. So, if, if I think there, Philip is in the UK, I, uh, his family. I see. Uh, are in the UK and sadly we were just discussing it this morning both the houses have fallen my goodness both the houses are just overgrown with weeds Goa has that problem where Very we can't, can't keep in touch with our with our diaspora and the diaspora you know finds it tough when they come back and maintaining it so it's diagonally opposite our house okay. in Pilen but we've uh, we've just lost out on it Anyway, on, uh, you know, just before we wind up, could you give a word of advice to young people who might want to enter this field writing? You've gained so much from it, you've given back so much to it. What's your advice to the young people? Uh, I always tell youngsters that just follow your dream. If you enjoy writing, just write. Uh, there is no good way or bad way. You can just enjoy whatever you write and then you could talk to somebody I mean someone senior I have a lot of the kids in college come and say ma'am have a look at my writing do you think it's worth it and it's a genre which I've never heard of it's magic or some magical genre which they write in today which is huge selling so why not I mean uh, we can always change genres today and they are public pub, uh, publishers who are willing to grab stuff from youngsters today because uh, youngsters write in a tone which is different from the old Brit style. That's what I feel. So just write and you never know, you may be the next hot, uh, you know, okay. JK Rowling in uh, India. Thank you so much, Marian, for spending your time coming here and sharing your knowledge and your work with us. We really appreciate and hope that uh, you'll keep in touch with Goa. Of course, you've always been doing it. I've yes. got a copy of this book that you sent me ages back. So I, I hope that more of our viewers get to know of your work and also appreciate it for what it's worth. Thank yes, you so much. Thank you.